we've talked about imperfect and perfect flowers. Remember, perfect flowers have both the male and the female parts in one flower. Imperfect means that they're missing either the male or female, which means you possibly have two different types of flowers. Now, how do you know whether you're getting a male plant or a female plant? Well, before we get to that, it might mean that you have two different types of flowers on one plant. If you have both male and female flowers on a single plant, that is called monoecious. Monoecious is Greek for meaning one house, mono meaning one. So you have all of the sex organs in one plant. Now, there are plants, and like I said, like the lily is like that, but an example of an imperfect flower where you have a plant that has two different types of flowers on it would be your traditional corn. Think about it. Where are the flowers on the corn plant? Well, a lot of people might suggest that the flowers are the tassels that are at the top of the corn plant, and you would be correct. Those are actually the male flowers. If you think about it, the male flowers is up high, and so those tassels contain the pollen. They have the filaments that release the um, pollen off of those anthers up there, and the gravity and the wind allow that pollen to fall down to the female flowers that are on the side of the corn stalks. And if you've ever shucked corn, you know how sticky it can be messing with all of those silks. So those silks are actually the sticky stigmas that we mentioned that the pollen has to fall down onto those stigmas. And each one of these corn silks leads to a kernel of corn. So kind of gives you a little perspective next time you're eating some corn on the cob and you notice one of those kernels isn't actually developed. That's because one of those silks that led to that kernel didn't ever get any pollen in order for that to ripen up. So that is an example of a monoecious plant with imperfect flowers. Now, what about the dioecious? plants. Dioecious means two house. So you have a female plant and a male plant, but how would you ever know whether it's a female or a male plant? Well, there are several examples of dioecious plants, including our eastern red cedars, ginkgos, asparagus. Those are all dioecious plants. So here I have um, a couple of eastern red cedars. If you take a look at this, now we all know eastern red cedars, they cause a lot of allergy problems, and that is because of the pollen from the male plants. They're actually produced um, out of cones. So you can see here, there's a male plant here that has these little brown cones on the end, they kind of turn orange, and they will release that pollen um, early in the season. But it is the female plant that produces these berries. Once um, the pollen lands on it and they begin to ripen, you get these bluish berries, which might be attractive um, in a landscape if you want. Cedar wax wings actually really enjoy eating these berries, but it's also these berries that then get later spread around and cause the eastern red cedar um, to develop in some other places. Now it is a native plant, so that's the eastern red cedar being dioecious, and a lot of your junipers are. Now here we have a holly. Not all hollies are dioecious, but some are, including the deciduous holly. And you can see this is a female because it actually has berries that are being produced on it. So why does it matter whether your plant is dioecious or not? Well, let's say you go and you want to landscape the front of your house with hollies that have berries on them. If you got male plants, you would have some plants that never have berries on them no matter what. It might be that you walk into the nursery and buy a female plant because it has berries on it, you get it home, and the next year it never produces any berries. That's because you might live in an area where there are no male hollies around to actually pollinate um, those female plants. So while you might have a female, it won't actually produce any of those berries for you. Now in most urban areas, you don't really have to worry about that because there's usually plenty of hollies around the vicinity. However, if you want to make sure that you do have both male and female, if you live out in the country or you want to make sure that you have berries that are able to produce, then you want to make sure you have one of both, at least one male. You don't have to have a one for one ratio. And the male can be in the backyard um, and you could have all berries in the front yard if you wanted to do that. 
Well, it might get complicated. Like, do I have to look for the flowers in order to buy the right hollies that I need? Luckily, the horticulture industry is there to help you out with different cultivar names that will kind of guide you as to what you might be buying, such as Blue Prince and Blue Princess, China Boy or China Girl. And in some cases, they've actually put the male and the female in the same pot, and they call that China Twins. So there you have it. It's sometimes made easy. If you look at the name, it often is a clue as to whether it might be a female or a male plant. Now, you might think, I should always want fruit, right? I always want the female plant, but that might not always be the case. Take, for instance, our Kentucky coffee tree. It's a native tree. It's a beautiful tree that has an open, airy canopy and produces these large, almost up to 12-inch long bean pods. Now, some people like those because of the ornamentation that they provide on the tree. However, if you have to be in an area where you want to make sure you're mowing under it, Having to mow over and around hundreds of 10 inch long seed pods can be a little damaging to your mower. So in that instance, if you have a dioecious tree like a Kentucky coffee tree, you might want to make sure that you're getting the male cultivar instead of the female. Again, the female would have the fruits, the males would not. So if you didn't want to contend with the mess of a female Kentucky coffee tree, you might look for a cultivar called Espresso, which is a male cultivar of that type of tree. Now another tree that you want to avoid getting the female is on is the ginkgo. Ginkgos are notorious, female ginkgos I should say, are notorious for having vomit-like smelling fruit. So probably something that you don't really want in your front yard, but ginkgos have a unique distinctive look as they have a fan-shaped leaf and they're a very attractive tree. So you might want to go with the male cultivar instead of the female when it comes to the ginkgo tree. So there you have it, reasons why you might want to be aware of whether that plant you're adding to your landscape is monaceous or dioecious. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.